So now I'm going to be preaching from 1 Peter chapter 3. And as you turn there, I'll just go ahead and tell you what I'm going to be preaching on. So now I'm going to be preaching on the golden rule. And we all should know what that is. Treat others how you want to be treated. Amen. It's a lost rule that I don't even know if it's taught in elementary school anymore. I know uh, back when I was in elementary school, I know for a lot of you, probably forever ago, but <laughs> the same way, but uh, I don't know if they ever did teach you guys that in school, but I feel like it should be uh, taught in middle school, high school, every single year that we're there because a lot of times we forget that rule, the golden rule, treat others how you want to be treated. My yeah. main point tonight is love as Christ. And 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 11 says, Turn your mic on there. There you go. There you go. Now, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 11, it says, Finally, be y'all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful and be courteous, and not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that you are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. And then in verse 10 it says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no God. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. And now let's pray. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I love you. Lord, you gave us one. Thank you, Lord, for having us on the way here. Keep us safe, Lord. Lord, to continue to touch, Lord, and be with us. And help us, Lord, to use me, Lord, as your mouthpiece and as your vessel. Lord, which please use me tonight. Lord, get me out of the way. Lord, just speak through me, Lord. Lord, snap your way and your will. Just please touch, Lord, Lord that uh, people will be encouraged, Lord, to love one another, Lord. Uh, Lord, as you love us, Lord. Lord, Lord we're so undeserving of all the blessings, Lord, that you give us, Lord. Lord no. But yet you still give it to us anyway. Lord, while we were yet sinners, you still die for us. And I thank you so much for that, Lord, and every other. Praise you enough for that, Lord. Let's please touch and help throughout this night, Lord. I thank you, Lord, and I love you. Amen. Amen. In verse 8, it says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, mm -hmm. having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful and be courteous. We are all one body of Christ. So Amen. always think before you say, that's what this is saying right here. Finally, be ye all of one mind. What does that mean? Think about what others are thinking about. Uh, when somebody else, uh, you never know what somebody might be going through. Uh, yeah, yeah. So just one harsh word could be what makes somebody hit rock bottom. You never know. you got to constantly be thinking about those people around you and what they might be going through. Always put yourself in their shoes. That's what the golden rule is all about, putting yourself yeah. In their shoes. A lot of times we look at people and we think less of them. But imagine if you were in their shoes. Would you want to be think uh, less of, or would you want to be made fun of? Amen. We gotta always think of others uh, as Christ has thought about us, uh, loving us and, yeah. uh, as equals, because we were all His creation. We were all made in God's image, no matter what we look like, and fat, skinny, it doesn't matter. We are all made in His image. We are yeah. all loved by Him. And uh, the same way, we should love each other. Uh, we, we should all uh, love each other no matter what we look like or what we are like. Amen. What our personality is, we should love each other. And then in verse, uh, or I'm going to get ahead of myself, and then it always says, and then it says uh, love as brethren, be pitiful and be courteous. What does that mean? Be pitiful. Uh, uh, when, when it, what it says right here is be pitiful. What does that mean? It means uh, to pity them. Uh, a lot of times uh, we say, well, we don't really like pity. Right. But truthfully, we all do. We all want to, to sh uh, people to show that they care for us. We all want to see that people care about our problems. And uh, uh, that's what we should be able to do. We should be treating them as we want to be treated. We all want pity, and we should pity them. We should be able yeah. to uh, pity their problems and give them care. <coughs> care about the, their problems. Care for their cares as Christ cares for ours. Uh, uh, it says, cast upon all your cares upon him, for he cares for us. Uh, and that's the way we should be with each and every person. We should be able to listen to them and let them uh, pour out all their cares on us because we're supposed to care about them. Amen. Amen. And then in verse 9 it says, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, uh, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that there, ye are thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing, yes. not rendering evil for evil. Uh, a lot of times we want to, uh, when somebody punches us, we want to punch back. We want to mm -hmm. fight back. When somebody calls us ugly, we want to call them ugly. Mm -hmm. But this says right here, it says, uh, uh, it says, contrary wise, not being evil for evil, but evil for blessing. When somebody does you wrong, you uh, tell them they're beautiful. If they call you ugly, tell them they're beautiful. And if they do something uh, hey, bad you, they say something bad about you, say something good about them. Uh, you've got to uh, always be the opposite of them. 
because a lot of times if they've got hate in their heart, they might not know Jesus. Yeah. Because the Bible tells us uh, that uh, if you can't love your brother, then how can you love me? And mm. they might not, they probably don't love God if they hate yeah. people. And uh, we've got to love one another uh, as Christ loves us. Uh, it, it tells us here, it contrarywise, not evil for evil, but mm -hmm. evil for blessing, the opposite of what they do. Yeah. And then in Matthew chapter 5, if you want to turn with me, Matthew chapter 5. Verses 38 through 42. And in chapter 5, verses 38 through 42. And it says in verse 38, Ye have heard that it hath been said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy coat, uh, cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Uh, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow thee, uh, turn not uh, thou away. A lot of times when people do us wrong, what what's the first thing we want? We want revenge. A lot of times we that's all we want is revenge. We don't ever want yeah. to love them because, you know, uh, that's against our fleshly bodies. We always want to uh, uh, fight against them. But our spirit says, what the Bible says, is that we don't do that. It says, he have, this is Jesus talking. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that's Jesus speaking, but I yeah. say unto you, that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the, thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. What did Jesus do when he was uh, walking up Mount Calvary, when he was going to the cross? Did he yeah. come back? Did he punch back? No. And what he did, he took it and he kept going. That's what we should do as Christians when we uh, get fought uh, by, uh, by people when they're constantly just uh, bickering at us and it's just we can't handle it no more. We don't punch back and we don't swing back and we uh, don't mm -hmm. continue to do evil and me be mean Lord. to them. But we got to show them love as Christ showed us. He, he endured those things. And then in James chapter 4, verses 10 through 12, James chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. You ain't got to turn there with if you don't want to. James chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. And it says in verse 10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Yeah. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver Amen. who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges another? Uh, it says in the very first verse, it says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Side of the Lord, yes. and He shall lift you up. You cannot love your neighbor if you think that you are better than them. If you yeah. go to a poor person on the street and you're saying, I can't believe you're in such a rough shape, I'm so much better than you, mm -hmm. do you think they're going to listen to you? No, that's not how it's going to be. Yeah. It's the same way spiritually. If you go to somebody and you say, You're so much worse off than me, and uh, you're horrible, you're going to go to hell, I can't believe the things that you've done. Uh, if you go to them like that, that is not out of love, that is out of hatred, yeah. and they're going to instantly turn you off. They're not going to listen to another mm -hmm. thing you say. But when we go with love, it should sound more like, uh, well, I was once in the same shape as you were. I was once just as uh, low and bad as you are. And without Jesus, I would still Amen. be just that bad. Uh, because that's the truth of it. Uh, uh, by loving one another, we got to tell them the truth. And that is the truth, that we are all bad. There's not a single one of us that are good. Uh, but with Jesus' grace applied into our life, that's the only thing about us that is good. is Jesus living within our hearts. That is how you're supposed to witness. You're not yeah, supposed amen. to tell them all the bad things they've done, but the things uh, that they can do and the things that Jesus has done in your life. That's how you go to people. And it says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his, his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. This is talking about talking yeah. uh, uh, to your brothers and your sisters in Christ. You can't go 
and uh, say, well, I can't believe thank you uh, uh, done to them either. You can't uh, uh, constantly be judging people. A lot We have the definition judge completely mixed up in today's time. But what this is saying, it says later on in verse 12, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. That's what judging is, saving or destroying. That is what judging is. We can't go to somebody and say, you are uh, accused of this, and so this is your punishment. No, we don't give the punishment. Only God can give the punishment. Sure. Uh, there is one lawgiver, and that is the only one that can give laws because he is perfect. We are not perfect, so we can't give That's laws. Right. Uh, that is the reason why there is only one lawgiver. Uh, and we are, we are not made to save and to, to destroy. That is only uh, God's uh, right and, and his job. That is him mm -hmm. and not us. In order to love someone who is the hardest to love, we must stay humble. That is yeah, one of the main points that you have to remember. Stay humble or the love that you show is not going to amount to right. anything. And then uh, I'll be turning back to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3 verses 10 through 11. And it says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no God. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Uh, what that is saying right there, it's pretty plain and simple. If you love life, then you're going to refrain your tongue and yep. you're not going to speak evil of your brother. If you really want God's blessing in your life, but we must always seek peace and not evil. Well, a lot of, I know a lot of people that want to seek evil and uh, love drama all the time. Uh, but the Bible says if you want to live a good life and if you uh, want to have his blessing in your life and refrain your tongue from evil, yeah. refrain your uh, tongue from all the drama that you want to stir up, just I, I don't know why. People yeah. do it, but people do it anyway. Uh, but it tells us not to do it uh, because if you want to live a good life, that's what we're supposed to do Everybody by is. His Word. And let Him eschew evil and do good. Let Him seek peace and ensue it. So not only seek peace, but ensue it. When you see uh, something bad happening uh, in somebody's life, uh, always try to make peace out of it and always let them know how God uh, is always going to be there for them. Uh, you've got to constantly be encouraging your brother. That's how you love. Uh, you can't love by telling them, well, I've been going, going through the same thing. I know a lot of people that won't go to my dad because he wants to encourage them instead of bring them down and uh, tell them all the bad things that he's gone through too. A lot of people are like that. They'll yeah. say, well, I don't like the advice from him because, you know, he actually tells me good things. They don't say that, but that's what's in their heart because mm -hmm. uh, truly a lot of us don't want to hear uh, about what Jesus has to say to us. And yeah. he says here, seek peace and ensue it. Ensue peace in your life. Amen. And we need to constantly pursue it and uh, seek it each and every single day. When you see hatred and evil, seek peace. And then my next point is going to be in verse 17 through 18. And it says, For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than sure. for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the type of love that we need Amen. to have. Uh, the Bible says there's uh, no greater love than this than uh, the brother to lay down his life for another. And that is exactly what Christ has done. A lot of us, we couldn't do that. We couldn't say, well, I'm going to lay down my life for you. Because rather, we want to admit it or not, 90% uh, of people love their lives and they want to sure. uh, and they uh, I mean a lot of times I used to say I didn't I didn't love myself but truthfully the Bible tells us that if we are feeding ourselves and we're nurturing ourselves yeah. we clearly love ourselves and uh, uh, one thing that really bothers me is in today's standards uh, going back to the golden rule about mm -hmm. how treating others how you want to be treated in today's society I, I seriously doubt they treat teach that anymore because all you see is love yourself, love yourself, love yourself. Um, but uh, back 
when I was in elementary school, it was all about loving others. Uh, mm -hmm. Because truthfully, we all love ourselves, so it shouldn't be a uh, draw sure. to us because we know that by instinct and uh, those type of things. What needs to be taught is loving others because, uh, I mean, truthfully, uh, the best way uh, that you can love yourself is by loving others mm -hmm. because when you love others, they'll love you. And when they love you, you're, you'll start to love yourself more. Yeah. I mean, uh, people, uh, I, I wish that the world wouldn't be going the way that it's going, but the Bible tells us it's going to. Uh, but a lot of people only love themselves, and they don't love each other. But, yeah. uh, and I hope that's not you tonight. I hope you don't go along with that standard of loving yourself because I, I know you did. You're here, and you're uh, probably not hungry. If you are, then you'll probably go home and get a snack. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it tells us here uh, it is better to... Uh, if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. What is that telling us? It's saying it's better to suffer uh, by not fighting somebody than to fight somebody and look all proud and buff and all these things. Because I know a lot of people that will just get in fights just to make themselves look good. But I promise you, it doesn't make you, make you look good at all. It's better to suffer for well-doing than being a chicken or all these other things. It's better to do those things. Uh, and uh, seek peace. That is what this whole chapter is about, is seeking peace and ensuing it. Uh, because that is what Christ did uh, when he died for our sins. Sure. He seeked peace in our lives and our hearts because we were heading for hell. We are all heading for hell without Jesus, but he seeks peace. Yes. He seeks peace in our hearts. Uh, there's no peace like the peace that God gives to me. Uh, I know a lot of things that I thought would give me peace. Never, uh, It never lasted. It would give me peace for just a little bit, but there's nothing like God. I've tried to stray away from God. I know a lot of us probably have. Uh, but as soon as I came back, I felt that peace again in my heart. Yeah. I hope that if you are in that situation where you're trying to trying to run from God, realize that there is no peace like the God that, uh, that, that the peace that God gives mm -hmm. to us is beyond all understanding. Uh, seek peace and ensue yes, it is. God's peace because this world it offers all sorts of pieces or different things, but there's nothing like God's peace. So Amen. seek that. And, uh, and I promise you, you can't love your brother if you don't love God. Right. And you can't love God if you don't love your brother. So you've got to always, the number one commandment is loving uh, God and then loving each yes. other. We must love above all things. I had this uh, uh, this message before Valentine's. I didn't even think about Valentine's, but mm -hmm. I guess God had that on my heart because uh, uh, last Sunday, uh, Avery was preaching around the same message, and uh, it, it really got me thinking, well, thank you for the assurance, but I really yeah. hope uh, that you guys know that love is the most important about above all other things. So love is the one thing I want you to know yeah. tonight. Amen. Not much of my message left. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but I'm really not. <laughs> if you're wondering, my title tonight is Love Like Jesus. <laughs> if you want to turn your Bibles, look at Matthew chapter 22. As soon as he said that, well, it's just typical of how this usually goes. <laughs> Matthew chapter 22. Verses 35 and 38. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Or what is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. Yeah. This is the first and great commandment. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today, God, and I ask you, Lord, that you would just help us, God, throughout this service tonight. God, that we'd be able to be obedient to you, Lord, and that I'd be able to do as you would have me to. Father, I pray you just use me as your mouthpiece, God, and help me, Lord. God, be obedient to you, God. I pray you just help with everyone here lost, that they be safe once they're last and too late, Lord. And I love you and I thank you for all that you have done. And all these things ask in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The first thing, the first person, the first being that Jesus loves is God. Above yeah. everything else, Jesus loved God in his yeah. life. His whole life was to glorify God. That was the whole purpose yeah. of his life, was to give God the glory for everything that he did. Because he loved the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus' whole, every, everything that he did was directed by the Father. Mm -hmm. Because of his right. love for the Father, he was obedient to the Father. Amen. And Jesus is a perfect example of that. I promise you, I'm not, I'm not look off Ryan's notes or anything, but this is what God has given me to do. Yeah, amen. God, what the reality of it is, without 
love for the Father. Mm -hmm. You cannot do anything else. Yeah. Yeah. And as Ryan said, without the love for the brother, yeah. you can't love the Father. Mm -hmm. And with, if we, first and foremost, we have to understand what it takes to love the Father. Yeah. Because the love that the Father gives us is the same love that we have to give of eternity. We cannot truly give that same type of love. Though. We, yeah. we are not capable of the love that God gives us. Mm -hmm. But we love Him because He first Amen. loved us. That is why we love Him. That is why we serve Him. Right. Because He loved us before we were ever born. Yeah. Before we were, he, it said when we were in the new womb, He knew us. Mm -hmm. He knew who we were. He knew what we were going to be. And He loved us regardless. Yeah. Yeah. He, came, he came to this earth to save our souls, to love us, to show us the love that we are to show one to show one yeah. another. Because that agape love, that sacrificial love, is the only love that we are to show our neighbor. The only love that will truly show them that love that Jesus shows us. As Christians, when we are saved, that love that is shown in our heart, that we, the love that we feel yeah. when we accept Him into our heart, is the same love that we have to try our best to show each and every one around us. We have to be sacrificial. We have to be willing to say when they when they curse us to bless them in return. Yeah, that is sacrificial to us because our flesh, what does it want to do? It wants to fire back immediately. Mm -hmm. Our anger and our we want we get stirred up and we want to say all kinds of things. We want to say all kinds of things yeah. to those people that curse us. But we are called Amen. to bless them in return. We are called, no matter what they do, no matter what they say, to bless them in return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when we do those things, we show God that love. When we come humbly to Him, humility is a big thing in a way that we can show God love. Because we are sacrificing our pride. We are sacrificing what we are. Because as human beings, our pride takes first and foremost in almost every aspect. Mm -hmm. Unless God is in our lives. Because yeah. we think, I am better than what this person is behind me. So I don't have to change myself. But when we sacrifice that pride... We realize we are the same as yeah. everyone else. Mm -hmm. That's right. We are no better than everyone else, and we are to love everyone else. Yeah. The terrorists that you hear out here about overseas in our country, those people are no worse than you and I are. Mm -hmm. Because of our sin, we are just as low and just as dirty mm -hmm. as those people. Sure. Yeah, because right. our blood has been applied to our lives. That is the difference. Because we are a part of a royal bloodline. Yeah. We are right. pulled in to what we did not deserve. See, God's mm -hmm. mercy is the ultimate showing of love toward yes. us. His wow. mercy, forgiving of our sins, despite who we are. Yeah. Think about all the sins that you committed, because I promise you, you can't. You try to think about every sin you've ever committed, you'll never under mm -hmm. We have sinned more than we ever should have, but because of our flesh, we do. Right. Because of Adam's fall, we do. Right. And because of our sin nature, we do. That's just a part of who we are. But when we do, what we do with that, is what sh what shows whether we truly love God. Yes. When we sin, we have to come and repent to God. We have to Amen. repent for those sins and come and find Amen. that communion that we once had. Because when God saves our souls, He wants communion. Mm -hmm. He wants to, He wants to dine with us daily. He wants to talk with us and speak with us and walk with us. Yeah. God wants a true and built relationship, but we have to love Him in return and show Him that love and sacrifice Amen. our time, Amen. sacrifice our flesh. First and foremost, because our flesh wants nothing but to destroy our spirit. Our flesh and our spirit war constantly. There's right. a constant war going on. And when we choose to love God, our spirit will take victory over yes. our flesh. Because when we truly love God, we'll do the things that God would have us to do. And I know that you think, well, I still love God when I sin. But the reality is, when we fail God, when we fall short of God's love, we are truly saying, God... I can't love you in this time. I, I'm not going to love you throughout this time because Jesus was a perfect example of love. And because of his perfect sure. example of love was because he was perfect and without sin toward God. Right. Because he honored what God had placed in, from the beginning of time, God had given a standard for perfection. He's given a standard and said, this is the line that you have to cross in order to get perfection. He laid that out perfect in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. You know, the, first, the first time that sin took place, our nature changed. Mm -hmm. And Jesus sacrificed that nature. Jesus came and he said, I'm going to sacrifice this body. I'm going to serve God to the fullness of my ability. And, I'm, and he stayed perfect throughout his entire mm -hmm. life. And that was the true showing of love to God. Right. And that is our model. That is who we are to model ourselves after, after as Christians. Mm -hmm. To be Christians is to be Christ-like. Yeah. We have to fully try to be everything we can in order to be perfect. We will not be perfect. I'm not telling you that you are going to be perfect ever in your life because you won't because of your flesh. But what we, the aim, the goal that we have is to be as close to being like Christ as we possibly sure. can and loving 
like he does. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Amen. And there's not really a whole lot here tonight that I feel like the Lord wants me to do. I think we'll let Ryan preach my message. And I, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here, and I'm thankful for his mercy. Yeah. Because without the love that he showed me, I would be nothing. Yeah, amen. I am nothing on my own, but with his love, I can be filled with his spirit, filled with his love, and that's the difference in my life. Because yeah. without him, I am nothing. Right. Without his mercy, I would be I would be a broken man. My mm -hmm. whole life, I would go through my life broken, without hope, without peace, and without joy. But because of His love, I can experience all of those things. Yeah, amen. I can get rid of the pride in my life and the things that bog me down. The things every day, every day I can load it off on Jesus. Say, Jesus, this is my burdens, and I want you to take them. And He takes them every single time that you can. Yeah. But the reality is, a lot of times we take those burdens and they stack up. Day after day, those things stack up on us. And if we would just come and give them the year, yeah. it would make a tremendous difference in our lives because He loves us enough. To take our sins and to give us His mercy, and we truly do not deserve it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right, one verse tonight in Romans chapter eleven, verse thirty-three. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable, how unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. You see, I don't understand mm -hmm. the beauty. Of his wisdom and of his knowledge and of his mercy. I don't understand why he did what he did for me. But what he did for me was beyond understanding. And I will never be able to truly understand why he did what he did for me. Because yeah. in my flesh, I can't understand that. Right. I can't understand why somebody would come knowing that I would fail. Mm -hmm. But he loved me enough to look past my faults. Amen. To look past my sins and he saved my soul regardless. And I am so thankful for the beauty of his mercy. And I'm amazed at the wisdom and knowledge of God. His ways are truly unsearchable. Yes. I cannot understand what he did for me, but I am so glad that he did because without it I would be nothing. And I would have a song invitation.